to Sunday school. Finally, it's nice enough that I can do this outside, which I wait for all summer long. I did a lot of recordings earlier this year, reading to Susanna and, and uploading that, uh, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. And I think those are still on the Google Classroom. So if you're curious, send me an email, I'll hook you up. Um, but finally, it's just beautiful weather today. Uh, and I'm able to be outside today talking to you all. And I'm very excited about that. So today we're skipping over uh, back to the gospels. So we've been focusing and talking about Moses and the Israelites for a long time. And this week in the lectionary, they're still wandering around in the desert. Um, this time they're complaining about being thirsty, which makes sense, they're in a desert, right? But we talked about sort of how we can help and be the arm of God and, and, and be the miracle workers uh, in today's world last week talking about the Israelites. And so today I wanted to jump over to the gospel because today's gospel talks about something very important. Jesus is in the temple and he's talking to the chief priests and the elders, and they are trying to trick him and trap him by by making him say and, and, and do things that uh, they know would be against the Jewish law. And Jesus isn't having any of it. So this first thing that they talk to him about, they're like, you know, uh, who, who, by, uh, who's telling you you can do these things? But under whose authority are you doing it? And Jesus is like, tell you what, you answer me a question and I'll tell you. John baptized, was that from God or was that from earth? And the chief priests and the elders talk and they're like, eh, we can't say one or the other because it's going to make a lot of people angry with us or it's going to prove his point. So we don't know. And Jesus says, all right, tell you what, here's a story. And Jesus teaches so much in stories. It's so beautiful and so wonderful. And Jesus says, uh, there's two sons. And the dad says to the first son, hey, son, go work in the vineyard. And the son's like, yeah, nah, don't really want to. But later on, he kind of feels a little guilty. He's like, you know what? I'm going to go do work anyway. I'm not even going to tell dad. I'm just going to go do the work. And this goes to the second son. And he says, son, go work in the vineyard. And that second son goes, sure thing, pops, no problem. And then he never does it. Now, it's an important lesson for us to learn. Because the person who said they weren't going to do the work, but then did it, in Jesus's eyes and in the eyes of most people, I think, is the person who actually did right. And the one who said they were going to do it, but then never did, That's that was a falsehood. That was a lie. You know, this, oh, well, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, and then you never do it. Now, we're human. I'm guilty of it. I, you know, I've certainly told people that I was going to do something and I didn't do it. But for us today, that's the challenge, right? Is we need to say we're going to do something and then follow through. And so we're going to go ahead and listen to the gospel. Uh, before we do that, let's go ahead and start with a prayer. Almighty God, we gather together to listen to your message so we may come to know you and discover how we are called to serve you in this world. Open our hearts and minds that we may explore what you are asking us to do. Amen. All right, let's go ahead and listen to the gospel. I think you're going to enjoy it this week. We'll be back in a minute. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 21, beginning at the 23rd verse. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching, and they said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you the authority? I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven? Or was it of human origin? Hmm. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd for all regarded John as a prophet. We do not know. Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. 
but he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? Be first. Truly, I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. Here ends the reading. Thank you so much, uh, Reverend Miller and Alex, for doing that. Uh, I, I'm going to go out on a limb and say you guys had a little bit of fun. Uh, that's awesome. I'm glad that that worked out. Um, and I'm excited uh, that uh, we get to share those talents with our uh, children of the church. Uh, thank you so much. It was, <laughs> it was really a lot of fun putting that together as well. Um, thank you, guys. Um, so, the gospel story today, right? We've got these two brothers and the Jesus' parable. And of course, Jesus teaches in parables a lot. Uh, stories to let us know uh, his mindset or the kingdom of heaven uh, or or different things that we need to be doing in the world. And so, uh, you know, here's a few things to think about, a few questions to think about. First, how do you think Jesus felt like sort of being verbally attacked by those uh, chief priests and the elders, right? Trying to trap him, trying to trick him. I don't know if I was Jesus, and I'm not Jesus by any stretch of the imagination, but if I was Jesus, I'd be annoyed, right? But what's cool about Jesus is, like, he's not annoyed at all. He just sort of is like, okay, fine. If this is the game you guys want to play, let's play this game. Here's some logic. Here's some, here's, he's, he stays calm. He stays polite. He stays collected. He gets his point across, for sure. But he's never angry or deliberately rude or disrespectful, which is really a great thing to emulate when we see Jesus behave in that way towards people who are deliberately trying to trick him and, and, and mess him up. This is an awesome way that Jesus handles himself. And we as Christians should really work towards that type of attitude when we are in a similar situation. So the first son goes off, right? And he says, nah, I'm not going to do that work. I'm going to go out and have fun or party or whatever. And as he's out there not working, he realizes, you know what? I kind of owe my dad something, right? And so he goes back. And while that might not have been what he really wanted to do, he realized it was the right thing to do. And even though he said initially, I won't help you, he ended up doing the right thing and going back, which even the chief priests and the, and, and the elders realized. They said, you know, which of the sons did the will of, the, of their father? And they said, well, it was the first, obviously, right? And then the second son gives his word, says he's going to do something, and then doesn't do it. And that happens a lot. It happens a lot in this world. A lot of people say in this world, oh, yes, absolutely. I'm not going to support that uh, going forward, and you can quote me on that, and I'm not going to, you know, and then they change their mind, and they break their word. People say, oh, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to take care of this situation, and I'm going to do my very best, and then they don't do it. There's no follow-through. Even we as people, our, ourselves, in our everyday lives, we have that come up sometimes. I know I'm personally, I've done that on a few occasions, and I can't, I don't know how the second son felt, but I have to think that there was some shame. I have to think that there was a lack of pride in anything that he did because he said, yes, absolutely, I'm going to do this, and then completely broke his word to his father. When we say we're going to do something, boys and girls, it is Christ-like. It is the will of God that we keep our word. Very simple. We're gonna take a couple minutes. I want to have a look at. Um, I want to have a look at our uh, sort of our craft or activity for this week, and then we'll be right back to close out with some final questions and thoughts and a prayer. We'll be back in a few moments. All right, you guys. I am here in the office right now. I'm gonna show you a couple of different things that you can do to sort of uh, help yourself stay accountable to yourself and to what you say you're gonna do and to and to family and friends and to God. Uh, the first thing, we're going to start, use a pencil, 
I would recommend a pencil as opposed to a pen and draw, do, trace your hand on a piece of paper. Just trace your hand, go around the wedding. Well, I'm, you don't have wedding rings, so I, I don't imagine, but I do. So I go around my wedding ring, come around here. All right, um, so here we go. And what we're gonna do is on the inside of the hand, we're gonna write things that you can do for your family uh, or for yourself um, that will that can be of some something of good uh, service. And then on the outside of the hand, we're going to write stuff that maybe you can do for the community. So from your guys' perspective, let's say, um, you know, we're going to write here, do homework every day. That means you're not going to let yourself slack off. You're not going to give yourself, so you, that's going to be a priority. You're going to make sure you get your homework done. Uh, maybe over here, we're going to write um, help mom and dad with chores you know and even here maybe we can add to that and say ask how i can help don't just wait around for them to ask you you ask them if you see that they're doing some chores maybe you know you get up you go say hey mom dad i see you're doing some chores can i help in some way and ask if there's anything you can do that'd be awesome um over here maybe you write something like uh, listen to my siblings. A lot of times, I know when I was growing up, I had a little sister, and we'd get in fights sometimes, and I wouldn't listen to her. I'd just be like, no, I don't care what you have to say. And, you know, I, I think that had I been more accountable like this, had I written something like this down, I might have been better as a younger person uh, about listening to what my sister had to say about various and sundry things. And so that would be uh, just a few things maybe you can write in here in the hand. Um, any other th sort of things that you can think of, you know, uh, specific chores, do the dishes, uh, vacuum the downstairs or whatever, walk the dog, uh, you know, write a letter to, to your grandma or something like that. Um, you know, things along those lines might be a really nice thing that you can do too. Uh, and then outside, you might write some things like, uh, well, you're too young to donate blood, but there's a blood drive coming up at St. Mark's on uh, Sunday. Uh, today, as you're listening to this, there's a blood drive at St. Mark's, and if you feel comfortable, if your parent feels comfortable, it'd be awesome if they would go and donate blood. You're too young to donate blood, don't donate blood. Um, but like maybe you might say, um, pray for hungry children. We talked about that last week, right? We talked about kids' meals last week, and so maybe we might write, pray for hungry children. Over here, we might write, donate some allowance money to a good cause. You know, something like a uh, relief fund for the wildfires in, in uh, the West Coast or something like that, or uh, a little closer to home, maybe a relief fund for the hurricane that just hit uh, Cameron, Louisiana and Lake Charles. You know, so things along those lines you can do as well. Obviously, there's less you can do outside uh, with the pandemic, but, you know, things along these lines that you can help make yourself count. Now, the other thing we can do is uh, uh, linked below this YouTube video is a connection to a piece of paper that you can print off of your printer uh, that has sort of tickets on it. Or you can make your own. So we'll go ahead and we'll just make it. We'll make three tickets here and we'll write a few things in those three tickets uh, that maybe we can do. And what these tickets do is they're sort of like coupons almost, like you coupons for yourself or for your family. And you're going to say ticket here, right? So let's say ticket and say this one is here for good for any chore anytime. So if your mom or dad has this ticket and you sign your name, I'll sign mine in here, okay? So if your mom or your dad has this ticket, they can bring it to you. You're playing video games with your friends or something. You'd be all playing Roblox or whatnot. And your mom comes to you and says, hey, um, I'm sorry to tell you, but the toilets are dirty and they need to be scrubbed. Well, you've given your word. Here's the ticket. This is your word. And as a uh, follower of Jesus, as somebody who keeps your word, as a follower of God, you are going to go ahead and you are going to say, absolutely. I, uh, Guys, I'll be back in about uh, 20, 25 minutes or so. i got to go scrub the toilets. <laughs> and you're going to go do that, okay? Uh, over here, this might be a ticket you write for yourself, right? So ticket, um, pray 
every night for one week. And you sign it, and that's something you can do uh, to help bring yourself closer to God. Over here, you might give this to your sibling or something, a ticket. We talked about this with the hand thing too, right? Um, one listening session anytime. Sometimes, you know, you have siblings, sometimes they all, all you want to do is just have, spend a little time with them and chat. And this gives you that opportunity, right? So you give that to your sibling and there you go. Now, the key is, boys and girls, is you've got to, if you give these tickets out, you have to honor them. That's the rule. You don't want to be like that first, uh, like the second son who said, oh, yeah, sure, dad, I'll go work in the field and then didn't do it, right? Maybe instead you can be like that first son who didn't really want to do the work, but ended up doing it anyway, okay? So it's very important to remember we keep our word as Christians. We follow through with what we say we're going to do. And we've got Jesus backing us in this 100%, okay? It is all about follow through, all right? Uh, well, you'll see me here in just a half a second uh, from my back porch. And I will hopefully see you guys very soon in person. I miss you all very much. Have a great rest of your weekend. And, well, here, here's, here's me again. All right, and we are back. Thank you so much. I hope you guys enjoyed that activity. Uh, this is not the most fun activity we're ever going to do in Sunday school, but this is one I think where really if we do this right and we do this well and we keep our word with these tickets, it will help us to be accountable to ourselves, to those to whom we say we're going to do things, uh, and really help us to be more Christ-like, which is ultimately the goal, right? Uh, is, is We want to feel that love of Jesus in our hearts, and a great way to do that is by keeping our word. And these tickets, I think, that we just talked about, I think that'll help you a lot with that. Uh, if you uh, would like to, you know, please go ahead and share some of your tickets with me. I, as I shared some of mine with you all, I'm going to give some to Susanna. I'm going to give some to, my, to Susanna. I'm going to give some to my wife. Uh, and I'm going to keep some for myself so that I know for myself these are things that I'm going to do uh, as accountability for for God, basically. Um you know, this is something I can do to keep myself in line with what Christ wants me to be and who Christ wants me to be. And I know you guys can do the same thing. All right, let's uh, go ahead and close out with a prayer. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for our time together as we explored what it means to serve you and others. Help us to remember that doing your work in the world, seeking and serving others in your name, and being the people you have called us to be is the most important thing we can do. Be with us as we leave this place and bless our acts of service that we might serve others in your name. Amen. All right, boys and girls, thank you so much for joining me again this Sunday. We'll be back next Sunday, hopefully outside again, because this is beautiful today. Uh, and have a great and blessed week. And remember, keep your word. If you say you're going to do something, do it. God bless. Have a great week. See you next Sunday. Thank <laughs> you.